rock star cartoonist by Michael Lyons. I watch the ripples change in size, but never leave the stream of warm impermanence. So the days flow through my eyes, but still the days seem the same, just the same, quite the same. Changes. David Bowie. Rockstar Cartoonist by Michael Lyons. 1987. Taken what they're given, because I'm working for a living. Arrow printing is a drag. I really want to do well, but I'm overwhelmed by the demands of being a simple bindery person slash delivery driver. The foreman is short, fat, and bald. He shouts out orders like a football coach. Come on, ladies, move it, move it, move it! Recently, he's taken to whistling for me like a dog. Yeah, Dick? Here, fill my cup up. Two sugars. David and I are sharing a two-bedroom apartment and a house, 20 minutes north of Bemidji. We're drinking beer nearly every night now, I smoke a pack a day. Our cat, Geldof, is retarded and walks sideways. Duh. I get myself to work on time every day, but eventually I get fired for basic good-natured incompetence. You're not working out as well as we had thought. You're a nice kid, but you just make too many mistakes. Instead of looking for another job in town, I pack up my stuff and move out to live on my brother's couch in Moorhead. 1988. I spent four years prostrate to the higher minds, got my paper, and I was free. My only goal for getting into college was getting a comic strip in the college newspaper. Thanks to a special program called the New Center that allows dummies into college, I'm admitted and my new life begins. By Michael A. Lyons, Issue 1. Reuben, Adrian, Edward. Franny, Wilbur, Paul Stanley. Coffeehouse Five is a regular is a regular features in the college paper, and I'm finally starting to feel like a cartoonist. Jennifer Rustad is sleeping with me most nights. When she stays with me, we have to sleep on the shitty mattress on the floor. If I stay at her place, I have to climb in through the dorm room window. You can totally see my footprints leading up to the window in the snow. In April, Jennifer misses her period. Please, God, make her not pregnant, and I promise I'll break up with her. Later, I got my period today. Oh, too bad. Maybe one day when we're married. 1989. Our house is a very, very, very fine house. Jennifer, Jennifer and I are essentially living together. I'm still paying rent on a base, basement apartment uh, for when her parents come to town, but we sleep together every night, share expenses, and have the same friends. She's the smartest, prettiest, and richest girl who has ever liked me. We decide not to press the issue of living together with her parents. The last time Jen talked to her mom about it, it didn't go well. It's not, it's not that we don't like Michael. We just can't imagine he's ever going to amount to much. Christmas at their house was kind of a drag too. Hey, thanks for the $400 in dress clothes. Do you like your mixtape? A private conversation with her father. Tell me, Michael. What exactly are your intentions for my daughter? Don't say fuck her and forget her. Don't say fuck her and forget her. Why marriage, of course. 1990. And day after day, love turns gray, like a skin on a dying lamb. There's no way I can afford to stay in school, so I start working at Mr. Print downtown. I've given up on trying to own a car and start taking the bus. 
Jennifer has stopped getting up with me before I leave for work. We're falling into a weird dynamic. Jennifer is the can-do, overachieving, private college girl, and I'm the lovable, blue-collar dimwit. Want to hear me play the first 10 seconds of Talk Dirty to Me? But is there a virtue to pure empiricism, or does it by its own method excludes metaphys metaphysics? She's well-informed about current events and politics. Her friends are all very hip and opinionated. I say I'm liberal too, but I couldn't tell you why. 